Hello, and welcome back to the stream. Let me just double check if this worked. Huh? Good. Uh, just because the mixer isn't showing that it turned off the mute. So, uh, been a little minute since my last time playing Wrath of the Righteous. And I'm back for just a brief second. This is not going to be a full stream. This isn't even going to be a full play of anything. But just yesterday, the shifter released. Here, let me change over. So right down here, you can see the last Sarkorians DLC for Pathfinder just released the other day. And with it came the new companion, who, if I ever get... When I get back to playing after I finish the current runs, maybe I'll go and try another run as a shifter and get this guy as a romance or something. We'll figure that out. But for the moment, what I want to take a look at is the shifter class itself. So we're going to go to new game here and we're going to go to Treasure the Midnight Isles. Yeah, why not? It doesn't matter. It's weird how that's... It's basically last as Lanty mode if you do that. Normal? Yeah, whatever. It's fine. Alright. I'm making a custom character. It doesn't really matter what we pick. Actually, did they add a new portrait for this? Doesn't seem like it. Alright. So, the shifter. There we are. The shifter is... In Pathfinder 1st Edition, I would say the Shifter is probably the worst class in the game. Like, out of all the classes that exist, almost all of them have some degree of specialization or functionality or whatever that makes that class unique and good, and you can build them out in whatever way. In some cases, some classes may be good enough to overwrite other classes. For example, the Primalist Blood Rager is effectively just a better barbarian because it gets casting, it's not alignment locked like a normal barbarian, and it also gets all the rage powers a barbarian does. It's a slightly decreased rate, but it gets the same amount. So, like, the balance there is a little weird. It's more mad, which is not great, but it's not that much more mad than a normal barbarian. Like, it, it's just, in general, a blood rate, a primalist blood raider is just a barbarian plus. That's one example. Then there's always the uh, conversation about, like, oh, well, this class just completely outdoes the other class because a wizard is so much better and has the silver bullets. But that's always just like it. It's a weird argument because. Even if a theoretical wizard can have a silver bullet for every situation, it's not always going to use that bullet. It's not always going to have the silver bullet. That's getting ahead of it, though. The shifter is one of the only exceptions to that rule that I can think of. The other exception is kineticist, which kineticist can get built in interesting ways. I've done it. There are neat ways to build kineticists that make it do cool and interesting things. It is just severely hampered in my experience and whenever I play around with it by burn. The mechanics behind the class severely hamper how it functions, but it can still function. The shifter does not function. In base Pathfinder, a shifter is a worse druid and a worse fighter. It is a fighter without bonus feats, and it is a druid without spells and worse wild shape. It is a terrible, awful, god-awful, nearly useless class. It got better with archetypes. They introduced archetypes later on that made it not completely worthless, but on release, the shifter was, I would say, the absolute bottom of the barrel worst class they have ever made for Pathfinder. Full stop. It is just a terribly designed class. 
The idea is neat, but it is a terribly designed class. What I think, my personal hunch, just from looking at the class features that the shifter had, and like what they were saying about it prior to launch, is that the shifter was their attempt to sort of... Okay, let me backtrack a little bit. When Occult Adventures was released for Pathfinder, they introduced a bunch of classes with occult flavorings. The Occultist is one of them, uh, Psychic, Medium, um, I'm trying to remember, Kineticist was in that book actually as well. Most people don't really use the classes outside of um, Psychic's decent, but it's like a weird sorcerer variant. It's bizarre. Uh, Occultist is really cool, but really complicated. Kineticist is Kineticist. You know what that is, probably. It's a really cool class that is severely hampered by burn, in my opinion. And Medium. Medium was the weak one, because it's some kind of weird... The basic idea behind Medium is that you channel mythic spirits, and mythic spirits in this case being like Archmage, Trickster, uh, Champion, Hierophant, like the Pathfinder tabletop mythic paths. You channel one of those as a spirit and it gives you a set of abilities and spells and other things. It's a very interesting class that lets you build a class on the fly, as it were. It's just kind of weirdly hampered because of how they had to sort of limit that. So you don't have too many options to choose from and everything has to be sort of balanced within a certain power level and it's arguably, they did it arguably okay. It's just, it's just kind of an okay class. It's not like god awful, but it's not as good as any of the other classes and it's not a very good jack of all trades at that. However, in the play test for that book, they had a vastly, vastly different class for the medium. In that version of the medium, which I like to call the playtest medium or the hero medium, it instead allowed you to choose from a number of different spirits based on the hero cards, which is basically the Pathfinder version of tarot cards. So you channel um, the Rabbit King, for example, who is a strength-aligned arcana. No, actually, I think the Rabbit King was dexterity-aligned arcana. Whatever. I've got the PDF on my computer. I can look it up. So all these different arcanas had different ability score restrictions tied to them. And by channeling one, you gained like a bonus feat, a couple of spells based on like the degree to which you channeled it. It was like, is this a medium or a major channeling? If it's a major channeling, you get a bigger effect, but also you get a penalty that you have to pay up. For example, I think one of them was like, um, it's kind of similar to how deific obedience has worked. Actually, I can I'll just pull up the PDF because it's a very cool, it's a very cool uh, concept, which I'm really sad they didn't bring back in full. So actually, let me just pull up the Occult Adventures. Let's see here. I still have this PDF because it is, it is a very fascinating class to look at, and I really wish it came out. Let's see, a Cult of Ventures playtest. There we are. All right, so looking at the medium. Got Kineticist. Uh, let me, there's, a, there's a thing here. Is there a table of contents? Uh, oh, right, Mesmerist. I forgot that class existed. <laughs> So there's Kineticist, Medium, Mesmerist, Occultist, Psychic, and Spiritualist. Spiritualist is okay. Honestly, Spiritualist is kind of boring, in my opinion. Like, they could have done a lot of cool stuff with it, but they just kind of made it into, like, a worse summoner. More casty-based. It wasn't, wasn't quite as cool. Okay, so there we go. Medium. It let you channel different spirits, and the different spirits were, like, um, Big Sky. Oh, right, they had an alignment restrict alignment thing as well. So the Big Sky is a good art line strength arcana spirit. Uh, you get the spirit bonus on attack and damage rolls because it's aligned with strength. And as part of its seance boon, you get a plus two to 
CMD against grapple attempts, CMD to break grapples, and strength to burst bonds. Because it's all about freedom. It gives you a list of spells. First level, you get burst bonds. Second level, you get daylight. Third, you get litany of escape. Fourth, you get primal scream. And there's a compulsion accompanied with it. So when you're channeling the big sky spirit, you also become short-sighted. You take action to enact your goals without regard to future repercussions. Uh, the lesser spirit power you get when channeling it as a lesser spirit is your melee attacks ignore an amount of DR or hardness equal to twice the big sky spirit bonus. The spirit bonus is like a thing that goes up as you level up. Uh, the chart is actually right here. Uh, spirit bonus is... Yeah, spirit bonus starts at plus one at level one. It goes up to plus six at level 20. So you get that. Um, the intermediate... Oh, hey, Kazakh. I have not actually touched the shifter yet. I'm still um, <laughs> I'm still going over my uh, history with the shifter as a class. Ah. A new follower. Also, thanks for the follow. So th th right now, you're basically listening to me do a spiel about like the shifter in Pathfinder Tabletop, and then I'm going to get to the class itself. So we'll take a look at that. Don't you worry. We're getting there. This is going to be a short stream, but it's going to be a stream. All right. So where was I? Right. So you have Broken Shackles, which allows you to ignore DR up to like 2 to 12 points of DR or hardness based on Big Sky. Uh, momentous Charge, which is the intermediate power, which is during a trance. Uh, Big Sky counts as Dexterity in addition to a Strength Spirit, which gives you different powers. And then Light of Day is the Greater Spirit power, which is... Uh, whenever you make a melee attack, you choose to have your weapon or body as appropriate shine with light for one round, creating bright light in a 20-foot radius and raising the light level by one step for the next 20 feet. Uh, this counts as a magical light spell for the purpose of darkness magic dispelling. Oh, Shifter is terrible. Shifter is the worst class in the game, in my opinion. And that is not an uncommon opinion. All right, and then there was also a supreme power because you could channel up to four spirits at a time. The Supreme One for Big Sky is standard action. Raise your arms to the sky, causing bright light to shine from above your hands in a 60-foot radius for one round. Light counts as a ninth level light spell for the purpose of darkness magic. All allies within the light are not affected by the confused, grappled, frightened, panicked, paralyzed, pinned, or shaken conditions for as long as they stay within the light. This only suppresses the condition, does not remove them. Which is pretty neat. I have not played D&D 5e Monk, but... I'll get into Shifter. Don't you worry. I'm going to get into there in a second. So, anyway, that's, that's just an example of one of these spirits. And there's a bunch. There's Neutral Strength, Evil Strength. They had, like, a whole bunch of these things in here. And my... This entire subsystem was removed from the playtest. It never came back. We lost all the Harrow Spirits when this place test was not used in the actual game. So when I saw the shifter, like, announced, my thought was, oh, what they're going to do is they're going to have, like, a chimeric class, which lets you draw aspects of different animals, and depending on what level you channel, you get, like, different animal abilities. And to some extent, they did do that. This is not... The shifter is not too far off from being what the Harrow Medium, the original Medium was. But it's so much less than that. The Shifter is just a failed creation on so many levels. Its major focus is natural attacks. It's a full BAB class, so it has that going for it. But natural attacks are kind of a dead end. Unless you are specced into a very limited feat chain, which gives you multiple attacks with natural attacks, you are limited to how many attacks you have per limb forever. So the full BAB, all it does is just make you have like a couple hits that are fairly accurate. You are never going to get more attacks. Like you get Shifter Claws. Uh, let's see. You get, you get Claws. You get two Claws. That's it. There, you never get to attack more than twice as a base shifter. Uh, running in which game? This game or Pathfinder? Tabletop or what? 
Elsa Hyman, Bron, how are you? Like, yeah, here, like, so it's a full BAB class. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, right, Pathfinder, right. Also, hi, Ludon, how are you? I'm just, uh, I'm prepping to go to PAX. Mentally prepping as well as other prepping. <sighs> right, so, first part, Shifter Claws. You know what, let's just talk about the class in the game first, shall we? I'm just gonna talk about the class in the game. So, Shifter Claws, at will. A shifter in her natural form can extend her claws as swift action to use as a weapon. The claws in each hand can be used as a primary natural attack, dealing 1d4 points of piercing. Yeah, I guess. The, the problem with it is always just like, when you shapeshift, you can't have too much power given to the person who's shapeshifting because then they become like a physical monster while also having other abilities to buff themselves. Like, 3-5 had a problem with this, where druids could just rule everything because they could turn into a giant bear, which had the physical stats of a bear, but also have their good mental stats and cast spells as a bear. Or there's the funny one, which is the... Um, the tiny bird of doom, which is just a little teeny tiny bird. It's a little, little teeny bird. And because it's a little teeny bird, you can't hit it. And it's just sitting there casting lightning bolt at you. And there's nothing you can do to it because it's a little teeny tiny bird. There's also goofy stuff where with the little teeny tiny bird, because it's so small, it has a high dex bonus, which means if you give it an agile amulet of mighty fists, it also hits like a truck. And you can buff yourself as a druid to have, like, magic fang. So you are just destroying people as a little teeny tiny bird who can just fly around and peck people and they die because they just explode. Don't worry about it. And then I think in the uh, playtest for 5e, the wild shape is also really strong in 5e right now because, like, you wild shape but you also get temp hp so you just constantly wild shape and never die that's what i've heard uh fourth edition i don't remember how that worked but i imagine it probably didn't very well anyway back to this so yeah yeah natural hands primary natural attack dealing money four points of um Piercing, slashing damage, uh, gains levels, it gets the ability to bypass DR, damage die goes up, critical multiplier goes up, all that stuff. Injured is considered S tier. Yeah, there you go, exactly. While the shifter uses wild shape to assume her aspect's major form, her primary natural attacks gain the same benefits granted by her shifter claws ability. She can use either the base damage of her shifter claws or the damage of the form's primary attacks, whichever is greater. The list of primary attacks is provided in the description of each major form. So, the first part of Shifter Claws is kind of terrible. By turning the two claws into primary natural attacks, that is a good thing for the Shifter. It's a full BAB class, which means that it will be able to attack twice at full BAB, and those two attacks will be, you know, relatively high. The problem being that it only ever gets two attacks. It can't do more than two attacks, because that's how natural attacks work. So, it gets two attacks 20, which is good, and nothing else. Ever. There is a bunch of stuff you can do where, like, if you use a, a, mod a manufactured weapon in one hand and your claw in the other hand, you can get more attacks using the manufactured weapon, and your claw becomes an offhand secondary natural attack, which is done at a minus penalty, but it's still just one attack. It's not great. And then there's a feat chain that specifically works for this, which is, I don't remember what it's called, but it gives you the ability to actually like two weapon fighting with natural attacks if you're in this sort of situation. But I don't think the game has that. So that's pointless. The good part is this section right here, where it allows you to apply that damage bonus to your shifted form's natural attacks. 
that's handy because it does mean that it's an added bonus to the shifting part, which is going to be a major part of the class. But only to the primary attack of that natural form. So if you're doing, for example, um, a bear, I believe when you do a bear, the two claws are not primary attacks, it's just the bite. So claw claw bite is bite primary attack, two claws secondary attacks. They don't get the damage bonus, just the bite does. Or it's the other way around. One of those two. No, they're natural weapons. It says right here, claws in each hand are used as a primary natural attack. I can test. I can test that. But that's, generally speaking, how they go. All right. Next up, shifter aspect. By way of the druidic discipline of wild shape, shifters become living aspects of the wild. At first, they're able to assume only a minor aspect. With time and practice, they can fully transform into ever more powerful forms. So this is a weird ability. It's not wild shape. This is the part that I said was kind of like the medium, where it gets to choose an ability, it gets to choose an animal, and then it gets like abilities based on that animal. But it's separate from the wild shape part of it. And this is kind of where the chimeric part of it comes in because you get like, you get to choose like a tiger or an eagle and you get different bonuses based on what you one of those animals are. And you can go like, I've got the claws of a tiger and the eyes of an eagle and stuff like that. But other, we'll get into more of the issues I have with this personally on that later. At first level, a shifter gains her first aspect, a category of animal to which her body and soul have become supernaturally attuned. She can shift into her aspect's minor form for a number of minutes per day equal to three plus her shifter level. Minor form being like, if a tiger claw thing is, I get tiger claws. That's what that means. It's not wild shape, it's just I get this ability for three plus level minutes per day. The duration does not need to be consecutive, but it has to be spent in one minute increments. Shifting into a minor form is a swift action while ending the effect as a free action. Until a shifter reaches ninth level and gains the chimeric aspect class feature, she can only assume one minor as minor form at a time. Shifting to a new aspect, or aspects in the case of chimeric aspects, or greater chimeric aspects, ends all minor forms currently manifested. As shift gains level, she gains more aspects. She gains her second aspect at fifth level, third at tenth, and fourth at fifteenth. So, again, you get four different forms you can, like, get aspects and abilities from, but you can't use more than one until you hit Chimeric Aspect and Greater Chimeric Aspect. Shifter's Fury. At sixth level, a shifter gains the ability to make several ferocious attacks with the same natural weapon. Instead of attacking with all her natural weapons, the shifter can choose a single natural weapon and make a full attack with that natural weapon, gaining a second iterative attack at minus five as if it was a manufactured weapon. When she does so, all her other natural attacks count as secondary attacks and do not benefit from Shifter Claws. Second attack with her shifter claws and her human reform counts as secondary, but does not lose any shifter claw bonuses. And her additional attacks increases with the shifter's base attack bonus. She gains another iterative attack at minus 10 when her BAB reaches 11, and so on. So this ability gives you multiple attacks, but you don't actually get iterative attacks. It just gives you the ability to make iterative attacks. This is like a weird band-aid patch on the problem. And all it really does is make multi-classing shifter into anything else not viable. Because if you do so, it doesn't trigger, I think. I never actually looked into this part. So in the game, they may have it trigger naturally. So if you do a shifter one fighter 20 or whatever, it will allow you to make it multiple iterative attacks. But I don't know how it works in the game yet. Also, the note there is it reduces every other natural attack you might have into a secondary attack. Most of the time, that's not going to be a problem because most wild shape forms only have a primary, single primary natural attack to begin with. Shifter Claw, 
just means that like your secondary claw, your offhand claw, is now a minus five all the time, does less damage in exchange for getting multiple attacks. So it's like having a weird one-off two-weapon fighting that you don't actually have two-weapon fighting for. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It is basically just an av. Yeah, exactly. It is convoluted. It's basically a value add, but it's just like... It's weird. It just It's very it's really weird because they needed to have the thing be natural attack focused, but didn't also want it to be not usable. Okay. Um... Oh yeah, also it does have to take uh druid druid alignments. Alright, so I'm gonna just pull up shifter real quick on the SRD as well. Because I just wanna double check what I just wanted to have this up so that I can keep track of what abilities may have changed between them. Yeah, Shifter Aspect, Shifter Claws, Wild Empathy. Shifter's Fury, 6th level. Shifter Aspect is the same. Shifter Claws is the same, basically. Uh, it actually lists out all the alternative natural attacks on the wiki here. Uh, let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Shifter's Fury. Yep, that's the same. Oh! Yeah, okay, right. That's why it was worse. Now I remember. Because the way Shifter's the way Shifter's Fury is worded here is this one triggers specifically at BAB. Like this one specifically works when your BAB hits fought 6, 11, you know, the breakpoints. The original one for a tabletop worked at levels. So at level 6 Shifter you got that bonus. At level 11 shifter, you got that bonus. Not BAB. So this one will actually trigger here and should theoretically work all the way through, but in the Pathfinder tabletop version, it did not. It explicitly only worked at shifter level caps. Wait, was it actually six HP per level in here too? No, it's a D10 here. The, the tabletop version is a D10 class. Why is this a D6? That, that puts it on the same level as like a rogue. Monk. Huh, wait. Oh, wait, I see why. It's half die. They're just doing half die. Okay, I didn't pay attention to this before. So it's doing a half plus one die. That's it. And then if I do wizard, that should be two or three. Four? Okay. I see. I see. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, okay, D10 right there. Okay. Uh, shifter claws, you got the progression there. Simple weapon proficiency, because they're druids. Shifter aspects, you get uh, these. And each one of these aspects have different bonuses attached to them. They don't really have proficiency with armor because they're basically a druid class, so shouldn't have proficiency with armor. I wonder if they can wear barding. Track, that kind of makes sense because right in here they have, uh, what is it, wild? They have wild empathy at... Yeah, no, they actually do get track at too. How about that? Okay, defensive instinct. Second level, when unarmored, not using a shield, and not conscious. Oh, and conscious. Sorry. Shifter adds her wisdom bonus of any to her AC and CMD. In addition, the shifter gains a plus one bonus to her AC and CMD at fourth level. Um, basically, the monk bonus. Basically, the monk bonus. Which is the same here. Yeah, if you're wearing... Wait. Yeah. Hmm. Hold on, do they have the same? Okay, they do. If she's wearing non-metal armor, she instead adds half her wisdom bonus to her AC minimum zero. So it is a monk bonus. There is a potential to use armor here, which is actually pretty nice. I forgot about that one. Okay, track. 
Uh, we got Woodland Stride at level 3, which... Movement penalties caused by difficult terrain. That makes sense. Major form. All shifter aspects have ma minor form and major form. The minor form gain grants the shifter some of the animal's physical traits, while the major aspect is the form she takes on when she uses the wild shape to transform into an animal completely. The list of abilities gained when the major aspects include those gained from the wild shape class feature, but the benefits gained from any resulting changes to size are not listed here. This lasts for one hour. Uh, Master Shapeshifter Mythic Ability makes this duration permanent. Using Major Form is a standard action that does not cause attacks of opportunity. Shift can use Major Form a number of times for day equal to her shifter level, plus Wisdom Modifier. So that's the Wild Shape thing. I think in... That's bizarre, actually. So... In Tabletop, Shifter does get Wild Shape explicitly. It is limited in its wild shapeness to only being able to turn into the aspects that you have picked. But it is wild shape, which qualifies it for various other abilities. In this case, they've changed it to major form, I guess, for the purposes of making it more um, easy to parse for players. Yeah, it looks like it's pretty much a one-to-one -one otherwise. Just, it's not wild shape here for whatever reason. Hmm. So here's the, okay, so here's two things about this. Let's see, Chimeric Aspect. Where's Chimeric Aspect? There it is. So part of the problems I had with the Wild Shape for Shifter is specifically related to how this thing works. When you take on the major form, when you go into wild shape, you do not get the ability to keep using your minor forms. You have to wild shape into the major form and that's it. Which I thought was a severely wasted lack of potential and makes this into just like a worse wild shape really? Because you get, uh, let's see, it's one hour and you can use it up to level plus wisdom modifier hours per day. It, yeah, it's one hour and then you can do it like that many times per day, right? So that duration... Okay, let me, let me get into the comparison with the druid in a second. The big part I always had about that was always just the lack of potential here. It lets you transform into just a regular animal but it doesn't let you play up the chimeric aspects. It doesn't let you play up, like, the choosing your own animal to, like, build your own creature kind of thing. You just pick these animals, and then you're either a human with a bunch of animal bits glued on, or you are one of those animals. And that's it. Which I thought was just kind of lame. This is new, though, by the way. So maybe that adds something. Also... Here's the comparison to the Druid Wild Shape. So, this one, uh, Shifter Wild Shape is one hour, and then you can use it level plus wisdom modifiers per day. Druid is once per day at fourth level for one hour per Druid level, or until you change back. And then that goes up um, every other level. So at level 18, you have eight transformations per day. And then at 20th level, you have at will. Whereas with Shifter, you have... Less? The deal with the Shifter is that it allows you to transform more frequently between different animal forms. 
but you actually get less time on the clock than a druid does. At 20th level, you're still going to have, you know, a full day worth of transformations if you want them, but you're going to have to do it in one hour increments each time. A druid can literally stay in wild shape the entire day and just never leave it. And that's in addition to having significantly more shapes you can choose from. A shifter is limited to these wild shapes. All of these. Yeah, exactly. Well, shifter gets up to four, really. Also, hi, Chris. But shifter gets bear, boar, dinosaur, mammoth, horse, lizard, spider, tiger, wolf, wolverine. Druid gets... There's wild shape. Druid gets anything in the beast shape one, two... Elemental form, um, monstrous physique, plant shape. Actually, no, it doesn't get monstrous physique. I was thinking of a different thing. But Druid gets the ability to turn into pretty much any animal, most elementals, and plants. Which gives it a massive amount of variability. For example, one of the most powerful forms you can take in wild shaping is that of an octopus. Because an octopus has nine natural attacks. So, turn into an octopus and just smack somebody around with a bunch of tentacles and then bite them with the beak. It's really funny when you're a vivisectionist alchemist and do that, by the way. Just turn into a vivisectionist alchemist at high level, turn into an octopus and just smack people around with a bunch of sneak attacks. Would you like to do... I don't know. 120 D6. Actually, how many is that? It's like, if you're at level 20, it'd be 20 D6. Or no, 10 D6 times 9. 90 D6. Would you like to hit somebody with 90 D6 sneak attack in a round? I would. Probably, actually, no, you could double that if you're using Satmaster. 180 D6 non-lethal damage. That's lethal at that point. It might as well be dead if you're doing 180 D6. I'm just saying. Anyway, so that's the pro that's the other problem. Druid can turn into anything. Uh, Shifter can turn into a little selection. It's an okay selection, but it's not the Druid selection. It's not the worst selection, but it's also not the best. It's just, in addition to that also, the druid can cast spells. The druid can just cast spells while wild shaped. The shifter can't. The shifter can get better claws, and the druid can just cast magic fang on itself, and fly, and uh, freedom of movement. And mage armor. Well, maybe not mage armor. Uh, Barkskin? Barkskin. It can do Barkskin. And it can breathe fire. And also it has an animal companion. Can't forget about the animal companion. It's just, it's, 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 why, there's l almost no reason to play this class. At all. All right, so we got we got all this stuff. Um, you have your limited wild shapes, limited in multiple aspects. Oh yeah, I forgot also the the aspects are only a minute increment. <laughs> M number of minutes per day equal to three plus shifter level. You get you get thirty minutes a day. You can get an aspect power. So let let's take a look here. Right. Oh yeah, right. At level twenty, you can use major and minor forms at will. Wild shape as good as druid. Not at all. You can wild shape better than a druid that exclusively turns into a bear, though. So let's take a look at some of these aspects. You got bear. Aspect of the bear is a juggernaut of tireless endurance and furious power. Uh, in its minor form, you get a plus two bonus to constitution. At eighth level, this bonus increases to plus four. At sixth, fifteenth, increases to plus six. And you turn into a bear. That, that's it. You turn into a bear is your major form. It's just a bear. 
It does give you a little bit right here. You gotta improve natural attack and crit for your stuff and awesome blow, but just bear. That's really all you need out of that. Now let's go to boar. Uh, you get fort save. Uh, you get to turn into a boar. That, that's it. There's a couple of bonuses, but you just turn into a boar. You're a better boar. None of it's going to keep you up to date with the druid who just turned into a boar and cast a bunch of spells, but you can turn into a boar. Now let's do another one. How about a spider? Uh, you get a dodge bonus to AC, which is decent. And then you turn into a medium spider, which can shoot web. And you just got to pick which one of these four. Wolverine, you get a plus two hit points per level and a plus two bonus to your constitution. And die hard is a bonus feat and the constitution bonus increases. And then you get the speed bonus as a Wolverine and Wolverine bonuses. Like, I, honestly, most of the major aspect stuff is just you turn into it. You just turn into the animal. That, that's really about it. You get slight bonuses to it, but you just, you just turn into an animal. Okay. So that kind of... I think that covers basically everything here. Uh, yeah. Chimeric aspect. So... With shifter, use the shifter aspect. Take on a minor form. You can choose two aspects and assume the, assume the minor form of each aspect. Uh, three aspects, and then final aspect is you can assume minor form of all aspects, which is all four. Oh, you also get a fifth aspect. Uh, shift to use your major and minor forms as well, but again, the major form just cancels all the minor forms, so the major forms have, like, bonuses wrapped into them, but you don't get any of the other ones. So you can't be, like, a badger. You can't be a wolverine and get the bear bonus to constitution. Because it does have its own bonus, but these would actually stack, because this is inherent and the other one's racial. Anyway, that is the base shifter class. That's the basic one. Let's go to Child of the Manticore here. I think the archetypes that came with it were Fiend Flesh and... I know Fiend Flush was one of the uh, shifter archetypes that was released with it originally. Oh, is there anything else in the original Pathfinder version? Not really. That's pretty much everything. Oh, there are more aspects. There's more aspects to it, like Electric Eel. But that's... That's whatever. Um... Oh, that's right. You have to be a druid. Or you have to adhere to the druidic stuff because you're technically, like, part druid. Okay, Rage Shifter, Rage Shaper, and Fiend Flesh came with it. I think Dragon Blood was later. Fae Four might have also been with it. Uh, Wild Effigy is new. Uh, let's see, Dragon Blood... A Dragon Blood Shifter was in... Oh, Wilderness? It wasn't... Oh, no, that was in the Splat book. Wilderness Origins, right. Form Shifter was also in Wilderness Origins. And then, let's see, Child of Manticore is new. Dragon Blood, Form, Fiend Flesh, Rage Shaper, and then Wild Effigy is new. Fiend Flesh was an ultimate wilderness. Raid Shaper was an ultimate wilderness. Yeah. So both of those two were originally the ones that came with the Shifter and were terrible. And after the Shifter came out, they added a bunch of archetypes that were decent. Yeah, but I think it's even more limited in terms of what you can wild shape into. Like you don't even get, I don't remember what you get out of that. Anyway, we'll go through them. The only one I want to bring up before we delve into these is one that's not on this list which is the ooze morph which is the most fascinating archetype for a character 
which is also terrible, but also the best archetype shifter had when it came out for terrible reasons. So, uh, table shop shifter, ooze morph archetype. The ooze morph is unique in that it actually, it's not a human that lets you turn into an ooze. It is a archetype that turns you into an ooze that can turn into a human. Hello, loot boxes. How are you? Been a while. So. Here, here's the main ability for the ooze morph. Yeah, right. An ooze morph's base form is not that of her race, but rather that of a protoplasmic blob that has the same volume and weight. An ooze morph treats her creature type as both ooze and her base creature type from her race for the purposes of effects targeting creatures by type, such as Bane weapons and Ranger's favorite enemy. In this form, the ooze morph is immune to critical hits and precision damage and can't be flanked. However, she has no magic item slots, so you can't wear like headbands or a belt or anything. Uh, cannot benefit from armor, cast spells, hold objects, speak, or any use or use any magic item that requires activation, is held, or is worn on the body. An ooze morph reverts to this formless state whenever she is unconscious or in an area of anti-magic. This is treated as a polymorph effect. It gets better. A number of times per day equal to half her level, minimum one, an ooze morph can assume a humanoid form as a move action. This transformation is identical to alter self, except the ooze morph can maintain the form for a number of hours equal to her level. Each hour after this duration, the ooze morph must succeed at a DC 15 fort save or revert back to her fluid body until she rests for at least eight hours. The save DC increases by one for each additional hour spent maintaining the form. At eighth level, the ooze morph can treat this ability as B shape one, and at 15th level, she can treat this ability as B shape two or giant shape one. Ending this transformation at any time reverts the ooze morph back to her ooze form and renders her fatigued for a number of minutes equal to the number of hours she maintained the form. This replaces Chimeric Form, Greater Chimeric Form, Wild Shape, Shifter Aspect, and all improvements of Shifter Aspect. So, to sum that up, Ooze Morph takes whatever character you had before you took that archetype, melts it into an Ooze Puddle, and then for, at first level, an hour per day, you can turn back into a human and talk to people. For one hour per day. For the rest of the time, you are a blob that cannot speak. It also does a lot of other interesting things. For example, you have no ability to be crit or sneak attacked. Uh, you can create natural weapons from ooze on your body. Like you can literally just turn your arm into a scythe and just slash people with it, which is pretty neat. Um, there is... You get the compression ability, so you can actually slip through, like, gaps that are too small for your body to fit through because you're an ooze. Like, this is actually a very fascinating archetype. It's just also really funny that, um... Okay, so the transformation part... <laughs> I, I can't remember the exact loophole, but... Oh, right, now I remember the loophole. So... All the parts of the ooze morph are extraordinary abilities, which means they're innate abilities that you gain, except for fluid body. Fluid body is a supernatural power, which means that it's a magic mystical power. And in addition to all this, ooze morph is still under the druidic restrictions of not telling people, teaching people druidic or anything like that. If you, as an ooze morph, teach a party member druidic who is not a druid. You lose druidic powers, which means you lose fluid body, which means you revert to your normal human body form, but maintain the ability to fit through tight spaces like an ooze, generate morphic weaponry from your body. And also, if you leveled up enough, have damage reduction because you're an ooze and also get a climb speed at level four, but you're no longer an ooze. 
stupid stuff. Anyway, I just wanted to talk about Ooze Morph because it is a fascinating archetype that exists if you want to play an Ooze for whatever reason. Just saying. All right, let's get back to the game. Child of the Manticore. Child of the Manticores. Manticores are known to breed with many lion-like creatures and shifters in lion form. What the fuck? Excuse me? <laughs> what? What? Okay, I was not expecting this to be step one of the archetypes. <laughs> I just, I got blindsided by that. That's just like a fucking, fucking just truck came out of left field and just smashed me into another dimension. Okay, uh, I just want to, I want to break this down real quick for anybody who's listening, who sees this in the future and thought this was a good idea. Tieflings and, like, Dragonborn make sense because those are, like, people... Okay. Tieflings and Asimar, first, aren't necessarily the re the union of people banging demons and angels. Like, just, just proximity to summoning one of those will infect your bloodline and maybe make a tiefling just pop out at some point in the future. So that's one thing. Second... Uh, Dragonborn and Tieflings or like, you know, whatever they are sapient creatures they are uh, not animals um, they are like people but just not people but they're people what's the in score on a manticore? what is a manticore's in score? are we looking at um, uh Mantic man manticore what what is your stat block manticore is it do you have an int score above what is your int score you have an int of seven okay that is not good in fairness an int score of seven is smarter than some pcs i have used um but that's not a good thing this is still a um mm, not sure about that one uh, okay, um, okay, uh, manticores eat any meat, even carrion, even though they prefer human flesh and rarely pass up an opportunity for such a delicacy. They are smart and social enough to bargain with or bully evil humanoids into alliances or offering tribute. Okay, so they are sapient. I, um, still don't like that. I still don't, I still don't like that. Not a big fan. Also, uh, I'll point out most of the time when people bang dragons, the dragons are not dragons at the time. They're usually like humans. Manticores are just always a lion, serpent, bat thing. Oh, sorry. Dragon wings, not bat wings. They have dragon wings. I'm still... I'm going to move on. Okay, what do we get? Uh, grow spikes. Instead of getting claws, you get spikes on your body and can throw them? First level. A child of the manticore can throw spikes from her body as a natural throwing ranged attack, which replaces her claw attack. Billy Elders functions of the shifter claws and benefits all shifter claw improvements. 
Uh, natural form can gain two spike attacks as a swift action to use his weapon. That's kind of interesting. Okay, so yeah, that basically just is the same progression. Um, you lose shifter aspects and final aspects and chimeric aspects because you are a manticore person. Oh, uh, you also lose major form. Manticore shape. I'm not, I shouldn't be surprised, actually. Uh, actually, let's go to this one. Uh, manticore aspect. Child of the manticore can take on the aspect of the manticore as a swift action. Uh, well, in this form, you get a plus two inherent bonus to strength and dexterity scores. You can maintain this form minutes per day. Uh, fifth level, making first attack in each round. Child of the Manticore throws two spikes instead of one. Roll the weapon damage dice for the spike attack twice and add the results together. Oh, so it's basically a double shot. Cool. At love 10th level, the inherent bonus increases. At 15th level, the inherent bonus increases. 20th level, making the first attack in each round. The Child of the Manticore throws four spikes instead of one. Roll them all together. Inherent bonus to strength and dexterity also increases to plus eight. Additionally, she now can use her Manticore Aspect and Manticore Shape at will. That is not... That's actually not terrible. And let me explain why, just because I have this dumb thought. This triggers on any attack you make, no matter what. As long as it's the first attack in a round, you get this bonus. You throw four spikes instead of one and add the results together before adding strength. What happens if you use Vital Strike with this? Does Vital Strike... Because if you get Vital Strike improved and Greater Vital Strike, you're rolling the dice four times per die. So will that just add four more dice onto the total? Or will that multiply the dice by four? Because if it multiplies the dice by four, that's pretty good. If it adds four, that's still decent. Not insane. Also, this bonus to strength and dex is actually pretty great for a uh, throwing weapon based archetype. Is there a lot of support for throwing weapons? I mean, there's a couple magic items that give you that bonus, but like a bonus plus eight to strength and dex inherent? That is pretty beefy. I can dig it. Oh, and then finally, uh, Manticore Aspect. Uh, no way, that's the one I read. This one. Manticore Shape. At fourth level, Child of the Manticore can use her Wild Shape ability to become a Manticore. Billy lasts for one minute. At least you can make it permanent with the Mythic thing. Uh, using Manticore Shape is a standard action that does not cause attacks of opportunity. Child and Manticore use Manticore Shape for a number of times per day equal to Shifter Level plus Wisdom Modifier while in this form. Oh yeah, I will point out, actually, the, um... The Master Shapeshifter Mythic Ability does make the Shifter better at Druid in terms of, like, uses per day and duration. Just, you know not as good with the range. But if you're going all in like this, like if you're going all in in a specific type of shape, that isn't an issue. Uh, let's see. Well, on this form, you gain a speed bonus, a plus 10 feet, scent ability, four spike, natural throwing ranged attacks. Ninth level, Child of Manticore gains immunity to ground-based effects and a plus four bonus to damage rolls with natural attacks. Fourteenth level, Child of Manticore gains an improved natural attack ability with a spike. I kind of want to try this one out in a second just to see if that works with the uh, Vital Strike thing because if it does, that'd be crazy. That might make this into one of the best throwing weapons, throwing specialist kind of things in the game. Not not like the best. The best is always going to be just like a regular character with throwing weapons like Windwog. But like this thing's ability to chuck out a single attack that does... 16 dice of damage is not bad. I could definitely see that being used. We'll have to see. Dragon Blood Shifter. Uh, draw upon their inherent strength and majesty of the true dragons, getting a measure of the powers from their association. 
You lose shifter aspects and gain draconic aspect for metallic, universal, and chromatic. Uh, temper imbue your body with draconic majesty. Dragon will shifter select one of the chromatic metallic types. Dragon, blah, blah, blah. blah. Uh, gain resistance and deal type of damage based on chosen energy type. Build sensibility and resistance against energy types. Uh, also, prevent damage with either resistance. Whenever she prevents damage with either resistance or the immunity provided by her Draconic Aspect ability, she heals a number of hit points equal to the amount of damage prevented. That's actually pretty tasty. I could see that being pretty good in some situations. You need to be in a specific situation where you will get hit by that energy type. But that would be pretty good. Um, maintain the four. Must be behind the wall. Blah, blah, blah. Dragon shifter. Select a different dragon type. Which you can use ability. It must encourage to Blah, blah, blah. Evil dragon blood shifters can only choose from chromatic dragons. Good dragon blood shifters can only choose metallic. And neutral dragon blood shifters can choose any. What's universal? Uh, fifth level energy resistance given by dragon increases to 10. A tenth level energy resistance granted increased to 15. And gains breath one. Breath weapon, energy type, the reflect deals 26 points of damage. Uh, reflex save, reduce half. 15th level, energy resistance grant is 20. And then 20th level becomes immune to energy type that corresponds to your selected dragon type while in draconic aspect gains spell resistance equal to 10 plus shifter level. Decent. Ah, you lose major form. Worm shifter. Uh, plus... Ninth level Dragon Blood Shifter can push her form closer to that of a true dragon. She gains a plus two racial bonus to saving throws against sleep and paralysis. Does not gain wild shape until level nine and use Dragon Kind one instead of B Shape two. Uh, you become a medium dragon like creature. Bonus to strength, constitution, armor, uh, immunity to difficult terrain, breath weapon, resistance to one element, movement speeds increase, bite, two claws, two secondary wing attacks. Uh, breath weapon and resistance depend on the type of dragon prototype. You get breath weapon, but it lasts for one minute. Makes it permanent. It's a standard action, does not cause attacks for opportunity. Fourteenth level becomes stronger. Bonuses increase. You become a large dragon. And then the twentieth level. Turn into a dragon at will, immune to sleep and paralysis. This is decent. So this is kind of what I was talking about with the base shifter. With the base shifter, there is no point to play it as a wild shaper because a druid will just wild shape better. In these cases, like asterisk, the regular wild, the regular shifter will wild shape into whatever animal and it'll get like some bonuses, but those bonuses will not outstrip a druid. With these ones so far, there are bonuses that will theoretically help outstrip a druid. In addition to giving like more focused effects that are just better. That's why these archetypes tended to do better than the base class. Because when transforming, you're just able to do more interesting stuff with it than just worse wild shape. Which is what uh, Fae Form and Fiend Flash kind of were. So let's take a look at those. So you lose the regular aspects, and instead you gain feign aspects. Uh, take on first world aspect and assume fade traits as a swift action. In this form, gain DR cold iron. Uh, you get a concealment. Maintain form for a number of minutes equal to day. Equal to three plus shifter level. Uh, you get DR. You get butterfly wings that immune to ground effects. Uh, DR cold iron increases. And bonus and saving throws. DR increases. Bonus increases. DR increases. Resistant to moving and pairing effects. Spell resistance. <sighs> okay, then you get the regular shifter aspects. When she uses her shifter aspect to take on a fairy aspect, she can choose a second aspect of tomb, the mire form of that aspect, alongside her fey aspect, allowing her to combine her fey aspect with the animal aspect available to her. So chimeric aspect is basically delayed a bit. You don't get wild shape, instead you get fey shape. Uh, you get to turn into an Ankru. It lasts for one minute. 
Uh, while in this form, you get speed bonus at plus 20 feet, two claw attacks, two wing attacks, a tail attack. Uh, you get sneak attack as rogue ability of the same name. Using your shifter levels affect rogue level. Eighth level, you select rogue talent. Using your shifter levels affect rogue level for the person meeting prerequisites. At 10th level, you gain invasion. At 14th, you get another rogue talent. So again, you get things that a druid can't get while wild shaping. You get sneak attack, some rogue talents, and evasion. It's still not great. It's like, this is, this is not a good archetype, as far as I can tell, but it's better than base. Because you do get something out of it, and you still get, like, the the fey aspects. Like, what do you lose? You lose the ability to... You lose five aspects, and the ability to turn into the animals, which is not necessarily that important. Fiend flesh. Turn into a... Let's see, yep. Your body, grow custom hunting... You hunt evil outsiders. You lose defensive instinct. Instead, you get fiendish resilience. Plus one natural armor boost to AC, resistance five to electricity and fire, and that that's it. You just it, the bonus increases as time goes on. First level fiendish flesh shifter can temporarily transform her body to an amalgam of otherworldly creatures. A swift action. Uh, you get a gore attack. What is this? No, you still get Shifter Claws. Um, let's see. Transform our body into an algorithm of more creatures. You get a gore attack. That So you get a gore attack in addition to your claws, actually. Maintain this form for a number of minutes per day. Uh, DR increases. Get immunity to ground-based effects because of your wings. Uh, electricity and fires. This is providing... Do -do 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 -do. DR, reflex saving throws... Oh, electricity and fire resistance doubles. Right level tier 10, immunity to electricity and fire and spell resistance equal to shifter level. 15 plus shifter level. See, it's decent. The defense bonuses are very nice. The actual transformation part, not too big on. Chimeric Fiend. Uh, you can use this. Daemon, acid resistance. Demon, cold resistance, devil. You get a bonus to AC and dodge. And then at this, you get additional bonuses, which is just increasing. And then at this point, uh, minor aspects of all aspects out well. Doesn't actually say how you get aspects. Now there's also a thing here, Infernal Claws. Oh, you get damage reduction bypass because you're outsider, cool. It actually lets you choose. Fiend Flesh Shifter can change which ability she gains each time she uses Fiendish Aspect. Okay. That's that's not terrible then. I like the defensive parts of that. These are kind of whatever. You get a bonus to a stat. The only really good one is Demon. And then... I guess this means you can get all three? Which is pretty nice, but still kind of mid. Raid Shaper. Not all shifters represent the balance of nature. Raid Shaper is a destructive force of nature brought to bear. A wild and uncontrollable engine of annihilation fueled by wrath. Raid Shapers fly into bloodletting frenzies and rain down devastation like unstoppable natural disasters. Uh, you lose shifter claws and aspects. Instead, you get Terrible Slam. Raid Shaper can deliver blows that demolish his foes. This functions as the shifter claws ability, except his natural weapons are treated as slam attacks. Additionally, the Raid Shaper's Terrible Slam deals damage to Constructs. First level deals five additional points of damage and then additional damage for Constructs. Um, you get two Slams. This is basically all the same as before, just for Slams instead of Claws. Okay, you lose Wild Shape, Major Form. Devastating Form. Raid Shaper can enter a state of intense fury, transforming into a living engine of destruction. Functions as Barbarian's Rage class feature, except entering the state of fury requires a swift action and you can maintain this form for one minute. Gains all the Barton fits of Barbarian's Rage and grows one size category larger. Uh, can use Devastating Form a number of times per day equal to Shifter level. This Rage ability removes this restriction, which is pretty cool. Once per use of Devastating Form, Rager can use the Ground Slam ability. Ground Slam. Once per use of Devastating Form, 
A Rage Shaper can slam the ground, dealing 1d6 bludgeoning damage per shifter level, plus initial 1d6 bludgeoning damage for every enemy hit by this ability, to all enemies within 20... Wait, what? 1d6 damage per level, plus additional 1d6 damage for every enemy hit, to all enemies within 20 feet, and knocking them prone. A successful reflex save halves the damage and negates being knocked prone. When the Rage Shaper ends his devastating form, he is fatigued for five rounds. Cannot enter devastating form again while fatigued or exhausted. The Rage Shaper falls unconscious, his devastating form ends immediately. Uh, grow to maximum two sizes categories larger with devastating form. Treat as greater rage. Uh, damage die of his ground slam is D8. Gains a plus four racial bonus to strength and improve natural attack ability with a slam attack in devastating form. Rage is now treated as Mighty Rage, Barbarian Ability, the same name, and the damage value is a D10. That's pretty goofy. And then here we have a uh, DR. So it's like Invulnerable Rager? No, it's just kind of like Barbarian. No, it, it's Invulnerable Rager levels. Uh, plus two natural armor bonus to AC and DR2. At 10th level, it goes to 5... 15th, it's 7. At 20th level, it's DR10, and natural armor bonus is plus 4. This is an odd one. I, It's pretty, honestly, not good. It's honestly not that good, because you lose a lot of, like, the utility that you get from these other things. But the ground slam is pretty funny, and getting barbarian rage is also pretty funny. So I could see being this being used. Like, it's not... It's not actually awful come to think of it it's just it is a very weird archetype but again better than base shifter because it's not just wild shape but worse finally wild effigy this is new wild effigy still takes on the shapes of natural animals but rather than transforming her body into flesh and muscle she transforms into constructed effigies of her chosen aspects okay you lose defensive instinct and track for armor plating the wild, a wild effigy's animal aspects are made out of carved living rock. When wild effigy is shifted into one of her minor or major aspects, she gains DRN, where N is equal to her shift. Wow, that's that's really good. Armor plating, heart of earth. At fourth level, wild effigy's stone aspects no longer require even the semblance of flesh and blood to function. When a wild effigy is shifted into a minor or major aspect, she is or is transformed into one of her aspects using wild shape. She adds the ferocity ability to the list of that aspect's features that gain a plus a 25% chance to ignore critical hit or precision damage. Okay, so it's fortification, basically. Wait. Wait, it mentioned aspects. Oh, wait, right, right. I thought they misnamed it, but, like... Wait, hold on. Did they word that right? They didn't. Okay, yeah, it is here. So, yeah, major. Okay, yeah, so it is fine. They did word that correctly. All right. Uh, Stone Claw Strike, 6th level. Wild Effigy can sacrifice minutes from her aspect's minor forms to turn her claws into adamantine. By expending one minute increment of her shifter's minor aspect ability as a swift action, she can grant her shifter claws the ability to ignore an amount of DR hardness equal to her shifter level for one minute. It's not terrible, but it's not good either, actually. Okay. So, looking at these, I would say the one... Okay. All of them, all of the archetypes are better than base shifter because they're not just wild shape, but worse. I, I'm most interested in Child of the Manticore just to see if that thing works. 
If it doesn't work, then that's probably one of the worst ones. But we'll see. Dragon Blood is pretty decent. It's not the best, but it is pretty decent, and it's good that it focuses on, like, one shifter thing and, like, really makes you get into it. Fate Form is also, similarly, it's kind of limited in that it's more of a roguish archetype, but I appreciate that they're kind of, like, going for the thing, and you still get some of the utility from the other aspects. Fiend Flesh is okay... I don't think this one's actually very good. Um, it has some benefits, and I like the ability for you to, like, change kind of what your bonuses are on the fly if you want. But it doesn't feel like it. the minor bonuses are worth the lack of other stuff you get. Like, most of the other archetypes, and even Base Shifter, gets other stuff that's more nuanced than the three you get for the uh, Fiend Flesh Shifter. Raid Shaper is really interesting and has some goofy stuff I think you can do. Oh, no, actually, can you, you can only use the Ground Pound once per day, right? Or once per shift. I wonder if it works with that tireless breastplate I can get. That would be funny. Yeah, I guess in that case, Raid Shaper's kind of meh, but uh, the... It's really good if you want to just stack strength because you get the Barbarian Rage on top of the innate strength bonuses. So you can just be a big, beefy dude. And if you want to, you can even uh, just chuck on a greatsword and not use your slams. Just, just use it purely as a stat boost class, which could be a thing. I could totally see that being usable. And Wild Effigy is... Um, Honestly, this just seems like a better version of the normal shifter. <laughs> like, uh, you lose out on the armor bonus and track, which nobody's going to use that anyway. And you get fortification and the ability to theoretically bypass hardness and DR. And DR. It's just a value add, really. Like, there's nothing you lose here apart from AC. I'm going to be real. I think the DR is better deal than AC. Anyway, let's do this. I don't really... I don't, I don't really care. Doesn't matter. There. Feet. Um, extended aspects. Oh! That's handy. Uh, but no, we're going for... Vital... Vital Strike needs level 6. That's fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, the whole... Yeah, yeah. Uh, no. Let's go for... Uh, Gazra. There. True Neutral. A mere flesh wound. A trivial task. Okay, now I believe the cheat mod should still work. Let's find out. Because I want to level up to 20 real quick and just pop in a bunch of things. Mostly Vital Strike. Ugh. Two mythic ranks. No, three. Okay, Child of the Manticore. We get these. Oops. Everything's kind of automatic at this point. Because I don't have any bonuses. So we're going for... Point blank shot. Why not? <clears throat> 
Can't get into level 7 anyway. Size shot. Shifter's Rush. Oh, let's actually look up Shifter Feeds. Oh, you could only get this... Oh, I already picked it up. Okay, Shifter's Rush. Uh, use the momentum of your movement to focus and awaken your inner beast once per round. When you move at least 10 feet or when you charge, you can use your wild shape ability as a free action. Shifter's Edge. When you use your use your shape-changing powers to make your natural attacks especially lethal, whenever you use weapon finesse feat to make your melee attack with your claws or natural attack augmented by your claws, you use and use your dexterity bonus on attack rolls and your strength modifier on damage rolls, you can add your half your shifter level to that damage. Shifter's multi-attack. Your secondary attacks with natural weapons, including attacks treated as secondary, as well as being altered by the shifter's fury ability, take only a negative two penalty and negative five. So it's basically two weapon fighting. Actually, are there any natural? Uh, razor Tusk? Athor. Trample. Wisdom 19. When you assume world shape form, you choose one of the following energy types. You can gain resistance 10 to the energy type. Oh, this isn't this is actually really good. Yeah, this is actually super good for Dragon Shifter. Or Dragon Blood, whatever it was. Because you can choose this, and you get... Uh, you choose this, and you get bonus to your energy type, and also your energy resistance increases. Oh, and damage type increases by... That's really good. It's obviously meant for um, druids, but hey, whatever. Whatever works, right? Okay, let's go Vital Strike. Uh, let's go Shifter's Rush, why not? What's the other... Yeah, improve Vital Strike. There you go. And then... Greater is at... 16. Let's do... Cluster Shots. Why not? And actually, you know what? Let me do hammer the gap. Takes care of that. Hero doesn't really matter. Yeah, let's do this, Master Shapeshifter. And I want Vital Strike Mythic. I don't know what to pick for this. Uh, Zada, why not? Natural attacks and are good, yeah. All right. 
Oh, hi, Ivu. I forgot you existed in this. Well, you forgot I get Ivu. I guess I probably shouldn't. Oh, that's handy. Look at that. Manticore. How do I tran untransform? Oh, you do. You do get your aspects. Okay, cool. Excellent. Okay, let's get to the boat real quick. Step deep and. Can I skip this cutscene, please? I don't care. I just want to get into a fight. I was playing him like getting dinner about an hour ago. <laughs> really? I don't care. Fine, I'm just gonna recruit whatever. Job done. How do I untransform? Oh right, I think there's a thing in here where I like. I'll take care of it. Hmm, that's curious. I guess I'm stuck as a manticore for a little bit. Oh yeah, let me also turn on turn based. Go by yourself. Everyone else, stay behind. There is an enemy. Okay. Ivu, you'll skip. I don't care. Five foot away. So each of these spikes, I'm level 20. Uh, so at level 20, each one of these spikes does 1d10.
I love this breakdown, by the way. So each spike does 1d10. Manticore shape makes them 2d8, which is the next size up. And then Manticore aspect multiplied it by 4 to 8d8. So I had 8 spikes, and then each one of those got multiplied by 4 for our 3d2d8 spikes. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Add on the strength bonus from Manticore shape. And then, oh God, that's right, because I had the bonuses from Voidal Strike. That's really funny. <laughs> oh, that's really funny, actually. That's, that's some hefty damage. I'm gonna go to the boss. Yeah, I'm a simp. Sniper Manticore. What's the range on these things? Does it tell me? It doesn't. I wonder how far away I can be when I use these. Let's try a point blank shot. Okay, I need to... Oops. Get back there. Enemy visually acquired. This is stupid. <laughs> How much damage was that? Uh, 220, because I lost like a little bit of damage from point blank shot. I am so happy this is working. Like when I when I tried Kineticist, I was really bummed out that the Vital Strike exploit didn't work. But now we have this, so it's all good. This is almost as good. It's not actually. I wish I could turn off the Manticore form. How do I, how do I turn off the Manticore form? Why, why can't why can't I turn off the Manticore form? Is the better question. It's permanent, but I should be able to turn. Oh my God! Is this, is this bugged? This might be bugged. Because when you're when you're wild shaped, right, you lose the ability to cast spells. I think it's bugged and turned off the ability to access abilities. Like just flat out straight up bugged. Let's, let me see something here. Um, if I, if I kill this character, can I just kill you? Party. Can I just, literally, can I just kill you right now? Hit points? Yes, I sure can. Let's set you to, can I set you to zero? Um, 
No, that set it's it's at the temp. Um, it's at the base hit points to zero. How do I set your current hit points to zero? That just sure did. Okie dokie. Um, this is getting complicated. How do I? How do I make that number into the actual number your health is instead of what it's saying it is? Uh, that's that's McMax hit points. Bonus caster level. Uh, bag of tricks. Bottomize enemies from death's door. I wish I just heal a character. I can't just kill a character. Um, second, no. How do I just kill a character straight up? How do, how do I just straight up kill a character? Is that possible? Stats. Maybe stats? Stats? No, I was in stats. Um... It's not helpful. <laughs> Uh, it's not helpful, and I don't know. I think I think it's bugged, and the game is also uh, running very poorly, which is not a good sign. But uh, yeah, I straight up think it's bugged right now, and I can't leave Wild Shape because it is treating me as not being able to cast spells, which is awkward. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna exit this before uh, something breaks. Anyway, that is the shifter. That was a two hour stream I intended to do for about 10 minutes. So there you go. Never say I never did nothing for you. I guess final thoughts are, um, base shifter still looks about as bad as I remember. I mean, it's like, it's not, technically speaking, it's not like an unplayably bad class. But it's just, there's no reason to play it, period. It is still one of the worst classes in the game because there's no reason to play it. It's just everything it does, someone else does well, better than it. My opinion on that still hasn't changed a whole lot, but the archetypes do have some interesting stuff to them. Like the Chimera... Basically, the benefit of the archetypes is that they trade out the aspect part, which is the utility that Shifter doesn't really get, and changes it out for other stuff. It gives you new bonuses. It gives you new things you can deal with. I also, um, I guess having the rules say that you can use major form and minor form simultaneously does help a lot, actually. So there you go. That does make things much better. So I guess it's, it's worth a shot. It's not completely unsalvageable. I just still don't like the base shifter at all. I do like the other ones. Chimeric shifter is very funny with that specific combo. I can definitely see something being done there with it. Um, not, not Chimeric. Manticore. Manticore. Child of the Manticore. The other archetypes range between like kind of meh to interesting and good. So, I mean, it's still one of the worst classes in the game, I think, but that's like less of a black mark than it was before. Now it's like a, the other classes are better, but this still has some things to offer instead of just don't, don't touch it. Just don't touch it. Just do not touch it. So yeah. Those uh, those new archetypes really actually help quite a bit because, like, the dragon blooded one is decent. The fiend shaper and the face shifter are, eh. The the wild effigy is just straight up just a better shifter. <laughs> it's just straight up better. 
Uh, Manticore, Child of the Manticore is not really that good, all things considered, but the, the, the Vital Strike thing is really funny. And uh, was there another one on top of that? I can't remember if there was another one that I'm forgetting. Oh yeah, the raid ship, the raid shaper, right? That one's that one's interesting. I think this one would do really well, actually, as just going for like a strength beat monster, because you are just with the um with the ability to get more rages per day. That does actually turn it into a fairly useful, just like Hulk monstrosity that just beasts out and beats things down. In fact, it's more of a uh, Hulk build then, um... Ah, oh, god, what was the one arc prestige class? Um... What's the Jekyll and Hyde? Master Chimist. It's more of a, it's more of a Hulk than Master Chimist is, so I can appreciate that. Actually, was this one in Tabletop? Bean Flesh Raid Shaper. Yeah, this one was in Tabletop, too. This one was actually one of the uh, base ones. Good. Oh. Oh, they severely upgraded it. That's why. <laughs> oh. Oh, boy. Okay, so... Here's what Raid Shaper gets in the original printing of it. Um, The Devastating Form functions as Rage. Requires a full round action, which is slower than it does in this game. Also provokes attacks of opportunity, which is worse. Um, if you're wearing any armor, that gets broken when you turn into it. It's limited to rounds per day. Equal to shifter level, which I think is actually... Is that... Wait... Yeah, no, it's worse. It's straight up worse. Okay, so let me let me read the Raid Shipper. Like, this is why I remember this one being terrible, actually. And why I'm like, why is it? I don't remember this being so good, but huh, weird. Okay, so Devastating Form. Uh, Intense Fury, it's Rage class, feature like a barbarian. As it enters as a full action, provokes attacks of opportunity. Uh, you gain Rage, also go up a size category. Uh, armor or clothing you're wearing get bursted off and gain broken condition. Uh, you get to turn into it a number of rounds per day equal to your shifter level. So like a barbarian, which is different from this one where you get it a number of times per day equal to your level and each one lasts for a minute. So by default, Raid Shaper gets... 10 rounds at level one. Whereas Raid Shaper originally got one round of this. Oh, you can dismiss Devastating Form only with a successful will save made as a free action. On a failed save, you remain in Devastating Form for an additional round. Wow, that's terrible. Oh my God, I forgot that was in there. If Raid Shaper does not successfully end his devastating form before he runs out of daily rounds, the next time he fails his will save to revert, he flies into an uncontrollable frenzy as if affected by confusion, but treats rolls of 28 to 50, 26 to 50 as attacks nearest creature. Each round the Raid Shaper spends in an uncontrollable frenzy, the will DC to exit devastating form decreases by two. Wow, that is awful. Oh my God, that's so bad. I'm going to have to go back to the other ones real quick to see if they're different. Uh, when Raid Shaper ends his devastating form ability, he's fatigued for a number of rounds equal to twice the number of rounds he spent in devastating form and can't re-enter it. Um, at 10th level, you grow up two size categories larger. At 20th level, you can grow up to three size categories larger. And his rage is... Okay, so those ones also do upgrade the rage. Okay, the ground slam is completely new. The ground slam is totally new. The ground slam is totally new. Wait, no. 
Yes, yes, the ground slam is totally new for this archetype in this version. Uh, terrible slam is same thing as before. Uh, claw, uh, the claw is basically tra traded out for the slams. Uh, you get invulnerable defenses. Um, a raid shaper becomes difficult to harm in his devastating form. Whenever the raid shaper takes on his devastating form, is unencumbered, either wearing no armor or wearing light or medium armor. He gains a plus two natural armor bonus to his AC and DR two. That's it. It does not upgrade. Instead of gaining the like invulnerable rager levels of DR, you just get DR two, and that is it. That's everything you get. You get unrestrained stride, which is woodland stride. You immune, you're immune to entangled, and you get the ability to jump as a move action instead of trackless step. That's it. Oh my god, this is so bad. Oh my god, this is awful. <laughs> this is so terrible. The game version is cool. I could see using the game version. The original printing is god awful. Uh, Dragon Blood. Let's go to Dragon Blood. Um, I will point out as well that the Ultimate Wilderness printing of stuff, terrible. Absolutely awful book. That book sucks. Like, it is a terrible book on almost every level. It's just, it's just awful. The shifter being terrible is just like the cherry on top of the awful, awful mess that is that book. Oh, let me take a look at Shifter again real quick here. Just double check here. Uh, defensive Instinct. Yeah, okay. This is this is about the same. This is about the same. Okay, Draconic Aspect. Um, this is about the same, although this one does not have the limitation on Metallic for good characters and Chromatic for evil characters. That's just that's just not in here. And da -da -da. Yeah, okay, that looks about the same. Uh worm shaper is about the same. Yeah, that's all about the same. Okay. Um Fay Shifter. Fay Form Shifter. Let's see, these are about the same for the first part of it. Face shape, you become, oh, that's it. Oh, oh, oh yeah, that's, ooh. Mm. Ooh. Okay, so here's what happens for Fayform Shifter. Uh, Fayform Shifter is largely the same, except... It keeps, instead of turning into an Anko and getting sneak attack, it just gets Fey form as a wild shape, which lets you turn into a bunch of different Fey, which is not great because um, most of the reason Fey are like even. Any kind of challenge is because they have special magical abilities that do stuff, and you don't get a lot of those in Fey form. Uh, Fey form, yeah. Uh, at fourteenth level, you get Fey form four. That's where like the crazy stuff happens, where you get blind sense, compression, nasal spray. <laughs> Ice walking, burrow, hide in plain sight, undersized weapons, tree mill, trample, fast healing five, frightful presence. Like there's a bunch of those abilities in there, but you need to like pick things. So it makes sense that the game would limit you to just being an Anko. And you get the um You get the animal aspects as well. Uh yeah, you get Fey Aspect and Yeah, basically it fun it functions very similarly to this one. It's just the shifting has been replaced with the Anko, so you get the sneak attack utility on top of that. And Fiend Flesh. I remember Fiend Flesh also being similarly disappointing. Um 
see Infernal Claws is the same. Uh, Fiendish Aspect is about the same. Okay, um, plus four enhanced bonus to constitution, store and immunity disease. Okay, um, these look approximately the same, actually. Chimeric Fiend at level nine, get acid resistance 10, profane bonus on saves against disease, demon and devil are fire and electricity resistance doubles. Oh no, these are better. They actually do add more stuff. You get bonuses on you get bonuses for everything and also resistances, which are better resistances. And then um at level 14, you get plus four enhanced bonus to constitution, immunity to disease, plus four enhanced bonus to strength, and natural attacks go up, and plus four enhanced bonus to dexterity and seen darkness which is not accurate. Constitution, immune disease, strength, natural attack, up. Oh, it actually is the same. This is actually a one-to-one. -one. Look at that. This one is upgraded, though. This one does give you better bonuses. But, uh, yeah. So, it, this one's actually pretty close to what the original archetype is. Which, yeah, I remember this one being, like, one of the better ones, but, like, not much. Because all it does is just kind of give you like some minor bonuses and it wasn't very exciting i think one of the other ones was like terrible just it's like um i think it's where touched it basically is just like it I, if i remember correctly where touch is basically just like a worse skinwalker as an archetype yeah let's use kind of go halfway with your transformation for wild shape which is not great. Then there's a bunch of other... Oh, Wild Effigy's actually in here. This was in um, Construct... The Construct Handbook? There was something in there? Uh, armor plating is... Let's see. That looks about the same. Although I think the game's version is better. This one gives you plus one enhanced most to natural armor and DR adamantine equal to half level. I think the one here actually gives you more DR. Yeah, this one gives you twice as much DR. And this is slash dash. This is way better right off the bat. Um, Heart of Earth is the fortification stuff, which is about the same. And level six is the same. That's the one that gives you adamantine claws. Okay. So that's that's that. Went through all of them. Uh, Child of the Manticore is nifty. They, they did a lot of work on this. Like, Raid Shaper being something I would want to play? Cool. Child of the Manticore? Neat. The rest of them... Fix up a couple small things, add some bonuses, make them a little bit better, make them a little bit nicer. I can dig it. Did good work. Honestly, they did really good work with this. So that's a thumbs up from me in terms of shifter, which is something I don't think I'd ever say. It's bizarre. I was not expecting shifter to be like a class that had something to it. And of course, they had a couple feats that were nice as well. I still think Space Shifter is terrible, but at least the archetypes have stuff to play around with and um, kind of have some cool tricks, some cool little toys you can play around with. Then again, uh, you saw when I was leveling up the other Shifter, you don't get a lot of choices with some of them. Manticore, you get no choices at all, just feats. And the other ones, you get basically choices in combat, but not a whole lot when leveling. Well, it's there. Now you know. Now I know, too. What will go well with this? Um, I don't know what Mythic Path would actually work particularly well with this one, honestly. Uh, 
ob the, the obvious, like, one for funsies is Fiend Flesh with Demon, and then Fae Form with Azada or something. No. But, um. Or Fae Form with Trickster. I think Fae Form? Yeah, Fae Form with Trickster actually would be pretty good. Because you get the sneak attack added bonus from Trickster on top of the Yonko stuff. Um. Dragon Blood with Dragon. <laughs> Why not? That seems like a waste, honestly. You have Dragon Form from Dragon as is. Gold Dragon, so there's no point in that. Uh, Child of the Manticore. I just, I don't really know what would be like a good mythic path for a shifter to play around with. Like apart from the ones I mentioned, which are just kind of funny because they have little, little bits of synergy. Like, is there anything that would work particularly well for like a Raid Shaper? I mean, I guess if the Raid Shaper, if you go Demon, you could get like a Super Rage bonus, Super Range. A super rage thing going with that. Uh, rage Shaper honestly is pretty good for any like physical based thing because it's a rage. Yeah, Demon Rage on top of that might be pretty good. Like Rage Shaper out, Demon Rage, smash the ground. I don't know if you can Demon Rage and then Rage Shaper to transform on top of that. I don't know if that would work. Like, that's the other thing. Uh, they're poly... I don't know... I don't know if these are counting as polymorph effects, or if you could, like, polymorph and then also have aspects added to it, which would make Dragon Blood Shifter an actually not bad idea for Dragon, because then you could get, like... You could get Gold Dragon, and then you could have other Dragon resistances on top of that, while also polymorphed into a Dragon. So you just don't use your major aspect. But maybe you could... I don't know how everything would stack. That's something else to consider. Like, how would these stack with one of the paths that give you transformation abilities? Something worth testing, I suppose. All right, well, that's my thoughts. So, there you go. That's Shifter. I'm going to leave that there. I just popped on for a second just because I wanted to see this thing because it just came out. So, hey, now I got to go get food because I'm starving. Hungry, I haven't eaten dinner. So thanks for stopping by. Enjoy the rest of your day, night, evening, what have you. And uh, I'll see you next time. Let's see, is there any is there anything I should do here? Like send people off maybe? Nah, okay, I'm good. All right, see ya.